looking to make some healthier habits this holiday season, make sure to check out our Moving Through Midlife community over on Facebook as we are doing a Planksgiving event where we are doing daily plank workouts. We will be doing an advent for healthy, happy hips this holiday season, and then also have a sugar challenge, a two-week sugar challenge that you might be interested in. Happy holidays! Welcome to Raising Healthy Humans, where you as a busy mom can come each week to find information on health and wellness for your family. Enjoy experts discussing tips to help raise children through each phase of life. Gather current information on nutrition and wellness and listen to Courtney, a personal trainer, health coach, movement specialist, and founder of FormFit, a community where she helps busy moms move more. Here, she provides you with movement and posture tips while sharing information you need to help raise healthy humans. Today, I am speaking with Lauren, the Wino Health Coach, who wants to ensure that you don't feel deprived of the things you love while living a healthier life. She is here to speak with us about how important it is to determine what works within your own body. I hope you enjoy. So Lauren, can you tell me a little bit about yourself and how you became a health coach? Absolutely. So I've been health coaching for just over four years now, and I got into it really, um, by happenstance, actually. So I have two kiddos that are now eight and six and they're about 23 months apart. And, you know, for whatever reason that I couldn't figure out the baby weight does just didn't miraculously melt off my body. And I didn't bounce back to 25 year old Lauren and I couldn't figure this out. So I actually went to health coaching school just for my own information. I wanted to know, you know, don't just tell me what to do. Tell me why to do it. I, I love, you know, the body. I'm a lifelong athlete. Like I was really curious as to why this wasn't working the way I thought it was going to work. Um, and so go through coaching school and had so many light bulb moments in the midst of this program, just realizing, you know, we're not taught this stuff. Like I didn't know these things. I was a lifelong athlete and, you know, very into health and wellness and nutrition and movement and all those things. And I still didn't know this. I hadn't come across this information. It's just not readily available. Um, so that was the kind of first light bulb moment. And then secondly, I remember walking into a meeting. So my background professionally is actually in communications in the biotech industry. And so I'm walking into a meeting, it's 8.30 in the morning with all these senior leaders. And, you know, they're MDs, PhDs, MBAs, sometimes all three. And they're chugging Diet Coke and having croissants at, at 8.30 in the morning. And I just remember sitting down, you know, with my black coffee and, and just thinking, like, we're not the picture of health and wellness. And we're a wellness, we're a health company. Like, we care about people being healthier. And we're just not living that by example. So I started coaching, you know, kind of on the side and in an ad hoc basis just to help other women predominantly um, that were having similar challenges that I was having being, you know, a professional working mom, high demanding job, not a lot of time and attention, but I kind of figured things out. And I felt like it was my responsibility to pay that forward. And then, you know, we entered into this, what I call the pandemic era and widespread. Everybody's talking about, you know, illness and sickness and I really realized that there wasn't, at least as far as I've seen, a big focus on becoming healthier and how can we strengthen this foundation of our well-being so that we either don't get sick to begin with, with any number of ailments, COVID notwithstanding, or if we do get ill with something, you know, we're in a better position to fight off that sickness or it's not as detrimental to our health as it could be you know, if we have, you know, these comorbidities or pre-existing conditions or whatever, we have more control than I think 
we realize sometimes. And so once the pandemic really kicked off, I was like, we, I've got to do more of this. Like I, I'm doing it casually. It's here and there, but you know, I need to make this commitment to myself and to people. I know this and other people need to know it. And so the coaching really got amplified in the last two years. Okay. Excellent. Can you tell me, because you're not just any old health coach, you have a specific way of teaching. So what is your program called or yes. your company? Yes. So I go by um, Wino Health Coach okay. um, and my program is called the Wino Diet. And it's a little bit tongue in cheek. Again, I come from a communications <laughs> background, so I like clever marketing, but I also strongly, strongly believe that if you look at health and wellness industry across the board, there's a lot of restriction, a lot of what you can do, can't do, a lot of what you have to do. And there's seemingly very little room for customization and discovery of what works for us. You know, we're our own kind of best biochemistry experiment you'll ever have access to. It's really, really cool, the human body. And so for me, I'm not giving up my wine. Like there, there is no health coach out there that could say, Lauren, you can never have wine again. That's the only way you can be healthy. I'm calling bullshit. There is room in our lives for those indulgences and those things that make us happy. Should I have two bottles a night? Am I having two bottles? Like, no, <laughs> but if I want to enjoy a glass of wine with my husband, like I did last night, that's totally okay. There's room for that. And so the wino diet was really born out of this idea that we need to find what works best for us. Mm -hmm. And there's no one size fits all to our health and wellness. It just doesn't exist. Um, so as far as my program goes, I bring people through a 12 week process where we really, you know, we work on building that foundation and really tuning into what works for you as the individual. Mm -hmm. And that looks like a, a short elimination period to kind of get the gunk out of our system and, and establish a solid baseline. And then we reintroduce different food categories and beverages to see how we respond. And people are surprised at what does affect their body, like what gives them energy or what makes them sluggish, but also what doesn't, you know, if you, again, I think nutrition science is one of the most hotly debated mm -hmm. sciences out there. Mm -hmm. Um, for, for right reason, we're constantly looking, you know, what's going to make us live longer or be healthier, but it doesn't take that individual and that customization piece into research. And you can't because we're all unique beings, right? We can only look at data across a broad sample size. So I really like to bring people through a, that personalized program where we, we kind of build that foundation, we reintroduce and test, and then we build something that's sustainable for the long term. And then everyone has their own kind of customized lifestyle program coming out of this that they can continue to adapt and tweak and experiment with over time. And it becomes sustainable because it's not me telling you, Courtney, you can, you can only have this and you can't have that and blah, 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 blah. It's you realizing this is what works best for my body. Mm -hmm. And if I want to be around for a long time, if I want to have great energy and run around with my kids or my grandkids or, you know, meet up with the girls on the weekends, this is what works best for me. Yeah. And I think a lot of people, um, I'm starting to hear it a lot more, but I think it's very hard to tell our moms that they have to look at themselves individually. Um, I feel like we are a society that has become, just give me the plan, just give me the workout, just give me what I need to do and not focusing on how does it make me feel? Mm -hmm. And that's what you're doing is making sure it's not a 12 week program that everybody goes through and everybody's going to have the same result. Correct. Correct. Yeah, correct. But they should have the same self-realization right. at the end of it. Like there will be these moments and, and th this picture of clarity and there should, there will be weight loss. Like there will be transformation. It just might not be, you're going to lose 18 pounds by the end of 12 weeks, but you're going to set yourself up and you're going to be equipped to take this on for the long term and create lasting health. I, I totally agree with you. We, as a society, we are instant gratification. We are quick fixes. Mm -hmm. Um, and 
that doesn't exist. It's not a real thing. I mean, it just, when it comes to your health, you know, if you're, if you're overweight or you want to build back muscle that you may have lost, you didn't build that muscle to begin with in the first place. You didn't put this weight on instantaneously. We cannot expect ourselves to just flip a switch and we're miraculously, you know, our 18 year old selves. (laughs) Yeah. Okay. So as the wino health coach, Mm -hmm. you are you are okay with them drinking alcohol in the evening. Yeah. So what if, have you ever had any clients where there's a reason maybe they wouldn't have that alcohol? So, so there's, there's two, two things I would say. First off, um, during the elimination phase, I, I strongly advise people to not consume alcohol. And it's okay. just about resetting ourselves. It's not long. It's maybe a month, it's about four weeks. Okay. Um, you can do anything hard, like not have alcohol for four weeks. Okay. Especially okay. if you're a mom, you gave it up for nine months. One month is, should be a piece, a piece of cake. I would say though, there is a difference between enjoying a glass of wine at the end of the day or on the porch on a Saturday afternoon versus needing to consume alcohol Mm -hmm. to make it through the day or the evening or what may have you much like anything else when there is when there is a need associated with it that's something we need to take a look at look at and that really falls outside the scope of a health coach that comes in the form of you know a a medical practitioner a, a, a therapist um there's something different there that needs to be dug into that isn't just about losing some weight. Mm -hmm. So those are kind of the things I personally have not worked with a client that has had, you know, an alcohol dependency. Mm -hmm. Um, But that doesn't mean that they don't exist. So I really encourage people to ask themselves the question, is this a need that I'm having? Or is this just, oh, I'd like to have something. And there's a different emotional connection to that. Mm -hmm. And if it's more on the dependency side, I'd say we need to dig into that a little bit deeper. Um, But just to build on that for one moment, that also goes far outside alcohol. If you have a dependency on exercise, if you have a dependency to eat a certain way or not eat certain things, if you have a dependency on a partner, um, there's, there's a host of things that we can build dependencies on that might require, you know, additional, more, um, medical supervision to get through that. Yes. And I think people think many times just because it's healthy, it's okay. (laughs) But like you just pointed out, that is a dependency and that can be an unhealthy situation at that point. Exactly. And, you know, we talk a lot about in, you know, and I know you do too, like building strong habits and healthy habits. Mm -hmm. And again, there's that fine line between what's, what's my habit and what's my daily routine. And do I feel anxiety or do I have, does something happen to me almost biochemically if I don't have that smoothie, or if I don't go for that run beyond just, "Mm, I'm not feeling my best today because I missed my workout. Right. Okay. Um, there's been a lot of pushback. I feel like COVID just kind of created this Mm -hmm. extreme world for everyone. (laughs) Um, but there has been, I, I mean, I remember even when my kids were little, they're older now, I felt like I had to have a glass of wine in the evening. Mm -hmm. It became, like you said, it was a way to relax. Mm -hmm. Um, but there became this, not, not for me, I didn't become dependent. Um, I do not drink wine. And that's one reason I wanted you on is because I'm of the opposite where I'm like, I, I mean, I maybe have a glass of wine once a month (laughs) when Mm -hmm. I go out, you know, it's not, and it's just because I don't feel good when I drink it. That's honestly, for me, that's what it is. So I was like, and I usually will tell my clients like, Mm, maybe you should cut back on that. So that's why I wanted you on because you are coming from a different aspect. And I love that. I think that's wonderful. But these moms who have become, you know, it becomes an every night thing. 
Do you mm-hmm. have any feelings in regards to that if they're consuming, say, two glasses a night? Like, what is the, how do you, I, I hate to say what is the allowable, because here again, we're talking about listening to our bodies. So can mm-hmm. you give some guidance in regards to, like you mentioned, if it's something that you need, that's a concern. Mm-hmm. Is there any recommendation? And this doesn't have to be just for wine. It could be say for those people like myself, I like sugar. So what is, do you have any recommendations on like, what is the amount that's acceptable? <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I I agree. It's very individualized. I think in general, you know, if you have a glass on average a day for women and two for men, that's kind of okay. Now, that being said, if you have two glasses on Tuesday and Friday, you know, again, it's it's kind of that average type thing. Okay. Um, I would say to the the question that I have clients ask themselves is, is it the wine or is it the experience? Mm. So is it the experience of the kids have gone to bed? I need to relax and just chill out for a few minutes and have that transition into, you know, adult time in my evening. So if it's the experience and not the wine itself, what new experience could we introduce? Mm. Is it a hot cup of tea? Mm -hmm. Is it a mocktail? Is it a hot shower or a bubble bath to kind of get the day off? So I think that's where that individual piece comes in. And I'm Mm -hmm. all about asking questions and probing to see what's going on there, right? Is it truly the wine or is it the experience? Nine times out of 10, it's the experience. Mm -hmm. And we can work together to swap that out. If you feel it's not a healthy thing for you, or if you don't feel great in the morning, or you just want to cut back. Um, I don't drink wine every day. I don't, it's not part of the diet. You have to drink wine (laughs) to, to, to be in the program. That's not it. You can, you can be sober and be in this program. It's really more about the customization and the individualization and finding what works best for you and your lifestyle. Okay, perfect. So we, you mentioned about COVID and different like inflammation. (laughs) (laughs) Sorry about that. Um, You had mentioned that looking at the individual in regards to that as well. What is your approach in regards to identifying what foods work for you in regards to like inflammatory markers and things like that? I'm guessing you don't you're just looking at how they feel, correct? You're not doing blood work or anything with your program? Not really, no, because I think um, unless if there's, you know, if you've had other blood work done by, you know, a functional medicine practitioner or your primary care physician, you know, they're, I think, best equipped. I'm not a medical practitioner at all. um, And I don't, you know, play one on TV either. So (laughs) (laughs) let's be clear on that. But I do think when you're paying attention to how you feel, Mm -hmm. generally speaking, you're going to see that in your labs when your doctor does run them on an annual basis, let's say. Mm -hmm. So as far as um, figuring out what what that looks like, again, it's that elimination phase. We're going to cut the sugar. We're going to cut the flour and and the carbs. We're going to cut the alcohol. We're really going to focus on um, you know, fruits and vegetables, lean proteins, organic ones, if possible, understanding everybody has budget concerns and, and, and access concerns or, you know, different levels of that per se. So it's really about just doing the best that you can to get that foundation in place. And then we reintroduce things. And what is interesting when you strip things out, sometimes you notice inflammatory by uh, markers pop that you didn't notice before. And I'll use my, my own example here from my personal journey is, you know, I cut all this stuff out and start reintroducing things back. And all of a sudden I notice that, you know, my eczema is popping again mm-hmm. on my fingers. It always happens on my pinky and my ring finger on my left hand. And I was like, Oh, that hasn't been there for a while. Mm-hmm. I just got so used to living with it. I didn't really notice it had left until it came back. And I was like, Ooh, why is this itching over here? Like what's going on? Oh, it's crusty and flaky. That's really weird. And we just have these self-realizations like, Hmm, this is triggering this or something's triggering this. Let me dig a little bit deeper Mm -hmm. and see what's going on here. Another example is, you know, I cut out 
dairy for a period of time. And when I reintroduced it, I had no issues with that whatsoever. Okay. Now, granted some, you know, again, you might read in the newspaper tomorrow, you know, dairy is the most worst thing you could ever consume. And there are certainly arguments that it, it may not provide the health benefits that we used to think it did, or that you can't get that same nutrient profile from other foods. Um, and there are ethical reasons there as well that, you know, may be an impact. But for me, I don't have a negative reaction when I consume dairy. I have a negative reaction when I'm consuming gluten and excessive carbohydrates that don't come from, you know, fruits and vegetables. Do you have anything in regards to family, any recommendations for children? I know your program is more for the moms, but is there Mm -hmm. anything that you notice with the family when you do work with the mom? So a lot of times it ends up trickling down, which is a beautiful thing that happens. So for me, I, I, and also I've got two kids, so I, and I have a picky eater. So I hear you on the nightly battle that might be happening in your household, but I don't want to eat that. I don't want to eat that. Um, in our family, it's, this is dinner. You can eat it. You can not eat it, but there's no option to be here. So eat, don't eat. That's up to you. Generally speaking, they come around to eating the broccoli and the stuff. It just needs to be on their terms. Mm -hmm. And I also never force them to eat anything. That's just how we do things. This is the meal. Eat what you choose. Um, I will say too, I have a recipe guide that I've put together. That's kind of like one pot, one dish cooking for the family. Okay. And a lot of times it's just about making healthier swaps for Mm -hmm. things. So, Mm -hmm. you know, healthy chicken nuggets or chicken tenders healthy mac and cheese. You know, I, I am obsessed with chickpea pasta. So I use that all the time in, you know, my mac and cheese or, you know, just having pasta. I married an Italian, so I can't get rid of the pasta. <laughs> in this household, it's just not happening. Um, but it's like, what swaps can we make and mm-hmm. experiment with um, that are going to be family friendly? And I, I will say too, my daughter had significant skin issues when she was younger. And since we've, you know, added a strong multivitamin and a probiotic for the kids and stripped out some of this stuff, um, her skin is, is perfect now and all that eczema and, and irritation went away. So you can experiment with your kids too, quite frankly, and well, it can be a family endeavor. Yes. And I was going to say, I feel like um, sometimes our children, I, I don't want to say many times, but sometimes our children have the same allergies that we have and it may go unnoticed early on. Yeah, Yeah. it may, because you think it's kids being kids or she just has sensitive skin or, you know, once, once kids are are potty trained, you don't know what their bathroom habits are necessarily, right? um, unless they tell you like my son does, but that's neither here nor there. (laughs) Uh, so you, you know, you lose a little bit of that, of that touch as they, as they get older too. Um, but absolutely. Cause I think some of these things are irritants for more people than not, mm-hmm. but you don't necessarily have to be on medication to do it. Um, you can play with your, your diet. You can play with, you know, um, vitamins and supplements and just see what, what do you need? Where are you lacking? Mm-hmm. Um, and, and fill in those holes. Okay. Can you tell us about, um, you mentioned you have your 12 week mm-hmm. wino health diet, wino diet. And then well, you I, also yeah. have the, um, one pot meals. Is that correct? Yeah. Yeah. So okay. it's just a recipe guide. I oh, include okay. that. I have, I have a 28 day program called the oh, okay. 28 day fat blast. And that's included in that program. Um, just to, you know, like what's some quick, I appreciate there's no instant gratification in this. But there is, you know, an accelerated mini program that I have, um, and that's included in that. Okay. So for the 28 day, I would assume that is not like a coaching program. Is that correct? It's It's more you're on your own. Exactly. It's a step-by-step guide. Um, I have a free group that people can join and they can get coaching and, you know, questions answered in there because I do think that touch point is important. Um, but no, the wine or diet right now is a one-on-one program okay. and I am working on packaging that so that it is an on, on-demand course and you can kind of go through and get the training and do it at, at your own pace as well. Um, so that will hopefully be in the next month or two, we're just putting some finishing touches on that. Okay, perfect. And where can we find you? 
Yep. So you can find me uh, on my website, uh, winohealthcoach.com or on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube at Wino Health Coach. And you have a podcast, correct? I do have a podcast. <laughs> Thank you for that. It's, it's funny because it hasn't officially launched yet. Uh, but yes, uh, also the Wino Diet podcast will be launching imminently. And hopefully by the time this episode airs, it will be officially official and, and out there. And our very own Courtney McManus is graciously a guest and you can find her on there at some point in the near future too. Okay, perfect. And is there anything else you want to let moms know before we finish up here? Oh, it's such a good question. I want to let moms know that you are doing a fabulous job. Your past quote unquote failures are not indicative of your future and you have more control over your health and wellness than maybe you think you do. Mm -hmm. um, Self-experiment, tweak things, get curious. If you can get curious about what's going on in your body, in your environment, um, amazing, amazing things can happen. And bring your kids along for the ride. Mm -hmm. Kids are super curious creatures by nature let them play around and experiment with you with some of this stuff, especially in the kitchen. If you're talking about, you know, cleaning up your diet and making healthier choices for the family, make them your little sous chefs when you're making dinner or breakfast on the weekends. Um, when it's a family experience, I think it goes a lot more smoothly. Yes, most definitely. And when you were saying that, it made me think, slow down and listen. Mm -hmm. I don't think we do that enough. And I think that's key to what you're recommending is just listen to your body. Just listen. Yes. Yes. That whole um, gut reaction, like this gut check thing, it, it's, it is tied to, you know, our gut health and, and all these things. Like it's there for a reason. Tune in, listen, pay attention. If something, if you're getting that, mm, I don't know about this, explore, get curious and see what's going on there. Perfect. Thank you so much for your time today. Oh, thank you for having me, Courtney. It's been an absolute pleasure. Excellent. Thank you so much for taking time out of your day to listen to our podcast. I hope you found this information valuable and hope that you are able to immediately use some of the information that was provided today. Make sure to check out the show notes for all the links that we discussed. If you are a busy mom who is looking for a community where you can practice living a healthier life, I would love for you to join us over in our Form Fit community on Facebook. You are also welcome to join our membership for just $15 the first month to receive access to our 30 days of hormonal health, quick workouts you can do in less than 10 minutes each day, foam rolling exercises, meal plans, and accountability calls. You can head to formfitnaples.com backslash join, and that will provide you with access to our community and our membership portal for 30 days. If you decide at that point you want to cancel, you are welcome to, or you can continue on for just $29 a month. Now go out and enjoy your day while practicing small healthy choices that will make lasting changes.